السلام علیکم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضل فلا هادي له وشر لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله وفيكم عباد الله تقوى الله وحبكم على طاعة الله All praises are due to Allah We praise Him and we thank Him We are forever grateful for all of His blessings, right? Grateful for all of what Allah has given us And for that we trust in Him We commit ourselves to Him And our commitment is encased in the shahada that we say every day. I bear witness, right? Personal. Not we. No, I. <coughs> I bear witness. Each of you bear, bears witness that there's no ilah in our lives except the law. There's nothing that we worship, there's nothing that we obey, there's nothing that we give our total commitment to outside of the law. This is the great truth and this is the great commitment that we make for us to say that we are Muslim. And the second part of the Shahada, our second great commitment is when we say I bear witness that Muhammad is the prophet, the messenger, the last sent to humanity. <coughs> He is our guide. He is our leader, our example. And we follow him in the practice, the established practice that he has set down for us. Emma Bot. We are, of course are in the first week of Ramadan, this blessed month. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is such a blessing for us. Allah grants us an opportunity 
opens a door for us. That, that what? One, that we might find monk freedom, that we might find forgiveness. Do we need forgiveness? <clears throat> All of us need forgiveness. We need the mercy of Allah. And Allah promises us this is the month. Wipe out our sin. The second thing that, that is the opportunity of Ramadan is to transform ourselves, to become better Muslims, better Mu'minim, to become better in our faith and in our actions. My theme today is focusing on the fact that hopefully Ramadan will increase us in our commitment and our dedication to do good in this world. Because Islam is belief and it is good deeds. You can't separate it. You can't separate it. And I want to reflect upon sort of duha. Everybody knows duha, right? It is the fourth surah revealed, or the fourth of the revelation revealed, or very, very early. And the context that everybody agrees on is that in those early, in that very early period, many people in his clan came down hard on him. They were harsh on him. And it disturbed him, you know, threw him off, made him feel bad. That's very clear from the surah, right? So that's the context. So what does the surah say, Bismillah rahim what do have with Lady Isa Sajjad? And by the morning light and by the night when it is still. So what's what's being evoked here? Silence, calmness, the morning sun, not the harsh sun of the afternoon, right? the morning sun and the night when everything is quiet, right? Calm, the stress is gone, right? All the tension is gone. A perfect time to reflect. And that's what we must do. We must find our duha and our still nights. We must find the time to reflect. And it goes on. Now what do مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قُولَا وَلَوْ آخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ الْأُولَى وَلَسَوْفَ يُعْتِيكَ رَبُّكَ فَتَرْضَى So Allah says, Your Lord has not forsaken you and has, is not displeased. And indeed, the hereafter will be better for you than the present or what will come later will be better for you than what you're experiencing right now. And he will give you, and you shall be pleased. In other words, and we can all reflect on this, right? That in reflection we know Allah has been good to us. In other words, have hope. Trust in the law. He will give peace. He will give you what you need. Things will be fine. And in that spirit, the law reveals to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam the times in which Allah did give him help <clears throat> and did give him so much, right? Don't you remember? <laughs> and Allah says, Alum yajidka yatima fa'awa 
وبجدك طوردا فحدا وبجدك عائلا فأغنى Did he not find you an orphan and he gave you shelter? Did he not find you astray and he guided you? Did he not find you poor and gave you wealth? Don't you remember? And we should all be able to remember also, right? Of the blessings that Allah has given us in this world. Remember those blessings, right? Remember what Allah has blessed you with. But here's the point of my football. What's the response? What's the response to this gratitude? What's to the response to the clear conviction that Allah is good and He will, He's with us? And we have hope in him. What's the response? <laughs> so what's the response? As for the orphan, do not be harsh. Don't scorn. Don't mistreat. Don't abuse. And the orphan in Arab society at that time was one of the weakest of the free people in society. The most vulnerable of people in society. The weakest of people in society. One of the most lowly of people in society. So Allah says, and for this lowly person, don't ignore them. Don't mistreat them, treat them right. Hold them up. Don't keep them down. Give them a hand and pull them up. Help them. Don't ignore them. And as for the one who requests, the one who is in need, the one who asks for help, let him help. Do not deny him. Do not repulse him. Do not turn away from him. Do not deny him. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks of us. This is not extra, brothers and sisters. This is not you know, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe. Maybe if. No, no, no. This is part of our deen. This is part of <coughs> our deen. That Allah has blessed us, and so we have to share that blessing by giving to others, by helping others. But the, it does end. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدَّ حَدَّ And of the ni'ma, of the blessing, of the bounty of your Lord, حَدَّ Proclaim. Talk about it. Do doubt. <laughs> Share. And hadith doesn't mean talk to yourself. Uh uh uh. Hadith means to proclaim to the world. And although this is not my main topic, but it does show you that part of our, our Amal Salah, part of our doing good in the world, is proclaiming the truth. That is part of our duty. And as a footnote, Mr. Bilal has started a, a wonderful program. Next week, they will provide, for the next few weeks in Ramadan, they will provide uh, a box, 
clobber of the club. And we invite you to take some of the, these boxes of our flowers and give it to your neighbor. And give it as a gift from your Muslim neighbor. Does your neighbor know about Islam? Probably not. So anyway, فَحَزِّدْ That's part of what Allah asks us to do. But the main point that I want to get across to you <coughs> is that to ask the question, for you to ask the question to yourself, what is my response? How do I show gratitude to Allah? Allah has helped us. We have to help others. Allah has given us sustenance. Allah has given us wealth. We have to share our wealth. <clears throat> this is what it means to be mu'min. And in Surah Al-Hujurat, one of the last surahs in the Quran, so I just, Doha, one of the earliest Hujurat, one of the last, in the, in the surah, the desert Arabs are, you know, becoming Muslim in great numbers. And so the verse says, the desert Arabs say, we believe, we're mu'mineen. And Allah says, no, you're not mu'mineen. Just say that you're Muslim. Because <laughs> faith has not entered your heart. And then the verse, the next verse says, Allah says, the believers are only those who believe in Allah and His Messenger and then did not doubt. They didn't give up. They didn't go astray. But here's my main point. What is the definition of the mu'mineen? Wajahadu. Yes, believe. And sincerely believe. But that's not enough. That's my point. Brothers and sisters, it is not enough just to say you believe. Because Allah says, who are the mu'mineen? Wajahadu bi amwalihim. They struggle, they strive, and it doesn't mean to fight. Because the word jihad is used in Mecca. It means to struggle, it means to make effort. To make effort with your wealth and your person, your time, in the cause of Allah, in the path of Allah. That's what it means to be a Muslim. I'm sorry, that's what it means to be a Muslim. To a true believer. That is what our deen is all about. So I ask of myself, I ask of you, that we use Ramadan as a time for introspection. Yes, let us become better Muslims. So we have to look at ourselves. What are we doing? What are we doing? How are we helping? How are we giving? Let's use this time to think of what we are doing and what we can do and what we should be doing, inshallah, in terms of helping the poor, the weak, helping in the cause of Allah.
15% of residents of Fayette County have what they call food insecurity, which means that they do not have access to adequate food. They don't know where their next meal is going to come from. 15% of Lexington's population is 50,000 people. So yeah, things are good, but there are the two or five in our community. 50,000, and in fact, the poverty level is also at 15% here in Fayette County. And you know what the poverty level? It is a family of four whose income is no more than $24,000. Just think about that for a second. A family of four with an income of $24,000. <coughs> I don't know how anybody can deal with that. So no, there is a need. Just recently, God's Pantry, which is the big food bank, and we are partners, we have a special relationship with God's Pantry because we're so good at food distribution. We get most of our food from God's Pantry, so we buy food at a cheap price from God's Pantry. But God's Pantry, just recently in an um, article in an interview with the leader of it said that um, the need now is worse than it was during the uh, pandemic and before the pandemic. He quoted that before the pandemic they helped 500 households every week and that now they help 650 households because of the inflation because of the price of food, because rents have gone up and has to put more pressure on people, right? And we see that also. The number of people who come by for food has increased, not decreased since the pandemic um, faded away. There is a need, brothers and sisters. And let me just address very quickly some of you might think, well, why give here? Let's give overseas. I'm not telling anybody to forget about overseas. No, we should be concerned about overseas. But it has to be balanced. You cannot give overseas and then forget about here. Where do you live? Where do you get your benefit? You get it here, right? How can you ignore the need here? Yes, we want to be aware of what's going on in Gaza and give. Yes, we should. But don't forget. Don't forget the Yatim here. Don't forget the need here. And I must say that our job here is to change the hearts of America. You know, we're, we're not going to do anything in Gaza. <laughs> You know, we're not going to do anything uh, other places, right? But what we can do is change America. And how do you change the hearts of America? How do you change the hearts of American people? How did the, the Prophet Muhammad was what? Amin and Kareem, before the Nisala, right? People knew him as being a generous person, a good person. That's what we, that has to be our image. That we are trustworthy. In other words, we care about people. And that we are generous. And that's why the Fukaha all agree your zakat priority is where you live. You know that, right? There's no disagreement. The priority of your zakat is where you leave. The same topic in his Fikasuna said that the logic is you live in a place and people see you generous to everybody else 
being concerned about, you know, somebody else, and it seems like you're not concerned about your own environment. That's a contradiction. So give, brothers, and be generous for this share center. And as you think out your lives, however you want to be generous, however you want to contribute to the good in this world, let us use this Ramadan as a time to commit ourselves to that good. ربنا آتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا أرسلك علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا ورسولنا على القوم الكافرين Our Lord pour out to us suffer steadfastness perseverance and let not our feet withdraw let us not retreat from the path but grant us victory against the Muslims. <coughs> o Allah, pour out your sabr to the Muslims that suffer in Gaza and so many other places. O Allah, pour out to them your sabr, your steadfastness. O Allah, increase in their hearts steadfastness. And grant, O Allah, ease for the people of Gaza and the people, the Muslims who suffer in the world. O Allah, Help us that we might see reconciliation, that we might see a way out of the, the tragedy of Gaza. Oh, Lord, guide us in what we can do to help bring about a solution. Rabbana la tuakhidna in the sina al akhtaqna. Rabbana wa la tahdil alayna isran kama hamalata fi ala al-lazina kabrina. Rabbana wa la tuhammilna ma la taqata lana bih. Wa'fu anna wa fir lana wa rahamna anta mawlana fansuna wa kawmi kafiri. Allahumma fir lana wa la forgive us men, the believers, men and women. Forgive us for our faults and our shortcomings and our mistakes. Forgive us for our sins and the wrongs we have done. And grant us that we might be truly believers, mu'minin, as you have defined us. Amen. 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 Amen.